Blog Talk Radio. Om Shabbat Shalom, Holy Way of the Most High. Om Shabbat Shalom, I sense your presence. Om Shabbat Shalom, Holy Way of the Most High. Om Shabbat Shalom, I sense your presence. And I am the light within your soul In the essence of truth and right Love makes the circle whole And here we stand in line Waiting for some sacred sign But to find the balance is the purpose of this time to restore the balance of the universal mind And in the presence of my Lord of light and love Everything I see aspiring to be free And when I call to thee And come on bending knee Surrender to the all-pervading light and love Reflections of the one surrounding me with love And I sense your presence I sense your presence I sense your presence I sense your presence Within and without, above and below, yeah. East, west, north, and south, I sense your presence. Without and within, below and above, yeah, yeah. East, west, north, and south, I sense your presence. I sense your presence. Shabbat 
shines on Holy angel of the most high Om Shabbat Shalom I sense your presence I sense your presence Thank you for joining me here tonight on Activating Compassion in the Midnight Hour. My name is Jesse Ann Nichols-George, and I'm your hostess this evening. The music you were listening to at the beginning of the show is I Sense Your Presence. It's by Shemshai. And I just want to extend a welcome, whether you are joining us here for the very first time or whether you've listened to the show and you're returning and, and you've enjoyed what I've done in the past and you're back here again seeing what's going on for tonight. We do stream live in three additional places besides Block Talk Radio. We uh, are streaming live through Talk Stream Live, Stream Finder, and Pen, also known as Pair Encounters Network. And I welcome everyone listening through there, as well as those that are catching our shows in the archives and through the YouTube version of the show. Now, here at Activating Compassion in the Midnight Hour, I look at different ways that compassion exists in our lives, how to remove our blocks, resistances, frustrations, and more. Some weeks I will be discussing different aspects of how compassion is in our life, how it affects our life, and the different areas of compassion. And then some weeks I'll be doing more exercises and practical implementations. And many times I will have guests on the show so that you can learn more about their work and how other things complement and work with compassion. And then also I highlight different musical artists along the way. Last year I had Stephen Halpern and Peter Cater on the show. I've had Jill Matson on the show, Claire Hattin on the show. Uh, Recently, earlier this year, um, Bruce Ciccarelli was on the show. So some really great people, and there will be some more coming up, definitely. And uh, so it's definitely a mixture here. Now what I do in my own work is I focus on helping people find and use compassion in their everyday lives. I've created the Genesis Clearing Statement, and if you've missed that, you can certainly catch it in some of our archives, as well as through um, interviews that other people have done of me, you'll be able to catch that work as well. I've authored four books, uh, the most recent being You, Me, Life, Dreams, and its companion workbook, as well as my first two books, Activating Compassion and its companion workbook. In addition, I've created the Compassion Tour, which is a multi-state nationwide tour, including workshops, retreats, seminars, book signings, and fundraising events. And you can certainly follow all of the live events uh, there are to to sign up for through my event site, which is jessianicholsgeorge.eventbrite.com. And actually, the Compassion Tour is getting ready to be underway again. And I've got kind of an exciting lineup of things that I'm going to be doing with that from Uh, doing uh, healing uh, sessions and thought song style sessions and full day events and full weekend events that are going on, Uh, highly, highly transformational work, as well as taking private live sessions at different places around the the United States. And that is actually going to be starting up here in as little as about a month. (laughs) So it is coming up fast, and I'm going to be passing through a lot of areas. So if you are interested in doing any of those private appointments with me, definitely you can contact me. My email is jessie at jessieannicholsgeorge, the number one dot com. Follow those on my website. Follow those through the event sites. They're all going to get uh, posted here during the next month for things that are happening through the remainder of this year. So a big, big lineup of things happening. Just a reminder that if you enjoy the show this evening, make certain you tell your friends, family, significant others, you know, just share it with those Facebook friends out there because I know that when I'm sharing things, people inevitably go, oh my gosh, this is just what I wanted to hear right now or this is just the show that I needed right now. And they can always tune into it in our archives just by using the same link that you use to get into our live show. In addition to that, um, they can go on to my uh, my page of the Main Street Universe tab on my website, which is Jesse and Nichols George, the number one dot com, and they can also find it on my YouTube page as well if they just put my name into YouTube, and uh, I've got these shows archived that way. So whatever their their interest is, as well as it's available as a podcast on iTunes and TuneIn dot com as well. So lots and lots of options there. Now, before we get started on everything, those that have listened in before, um, you know that I like to delve into the 
book, The 72 Names of God by Yehuda Bird. And somebody recently asked me, they go, you must have a huge background <laughs> in the Kabbalah area. I have a little bit of a background in, a, in the Kabbalah area, and uh, that is part of what I do. I blend 50 different plus fields of belief systems and practices, and the thing that I like about Yehuda's Berg, Yehuda Berg's work is that, um, you know, it's just great messages. It's a great tuning in for us, and he takes those big concepts, he puts them in everyday language, and it's just kind of a great little theme to have for the week. So. Um, and that's kind of the way I work, is bringing these bigger concepts into everyday life for people, because that's where we really get the messages. That's where we can really apply it. If it stays out there in that big nebulous cloud somewhere, um, and we don't get it implemented into our own lives, and we're not seeing how that's, that works in our own life, then we don't get the benefits of it. So that's why I work with, with Yehuda's work so much. And um, and I use this a lot just for getting my own insights as well. So let's see what he's got on the message tonight. And I think this is going to be great with the theme that we have going on tonight, Unleashing Our Master Manifester. And the word or the name of God that he's got, the common name tonight, is Jealousy. Okay, And this is a very interesting piece how this fits in. And the, the message that goes with this is, when the problems of the world weigh heavy upon us, poverty, famine, disease, terror, and hatred, we can do something about it. Address the underlying root cause, our own jealousy. Now, I love this piece of the message because we oftentimes don't think about poverty and disease and these different things coming from jealousy. And, and it's part of a deprivation pattern. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later tonight. The insight he gives on this is, the upper world is like a vast cosmic echo chamber. Curse the heavens, and what happens? The echo chamber returns. The curse to its point of origin. And that plays into some of the other things we're going to talk about tonight. You know, we have that law of resonance and things like that. Um, that's part of that kind of karmic influence that comes in. Kabbalah tells us the elevated region of the upper world is stirred when our own world stirs. The concepts of above and below refer to both the spiritual and physical aspects of human beings, the body and soul, and to the upper and lower stirrings of the cosmos and earth. Everything is tied together in a single stirring dance of creation. The chaos and strife that afflict our generation originates from negative forces swirling in the upper worlds. But these dark forces originate in the individual and collective actions of human beings. They echo our own destructive deeds. So again, this comes back to choices, thoughts, things like that that we are going to talk about tonight. That we may find it difficult to accept our hurtful words jealous stares, and envious thoughts about others have a cumulative negative effect in the spiritual realm, which in turn generates personal and global suffering. To eradicate the darkness and chaos from human existence, we must extinguish the parallel forces in the upper world through the power of this name. And I find this interesting because we forget, we think, well, what does my one little thought do? Right? What does my one little feeling in that moment do? And we forget that this builds up and it accumulates and every one of those thoughts does affect the upper world. And when we're affecting the upper world, we're, again, affecting our own selves on a global level. So it's this constant rebounding kind of mirror that's going on. Um, and we'll get a little more into that on those thoughts and things too. Now the meditation that Yehuda gets on this is you ascend to the upper world to diminish the forces of darkness caused by your jealous stares and envious thoughts. In turn, you lessen the pain and suffering in the world. And I think this is important because when we talk about returning to the upper world, it's about oftentimes tuning in to our divine self, our known self, our God self, if you want to say that. Um, and that's a powerful thing. It's about 
getting into those higher vibrations. And when we do that, we leave all of these jealousy and these negative influences uh, behind us, so to say. And, and that's where we can truly start to heal. Now, the common word or name for this um, of God that we have tonight is jealousy. And the more formal way it's pronounced is Chet Havav. Chet Havav. And that is posted on my page of the Main Street Universe tab on my website. You can go back and look at that throughout the week. It is there for you to reference and to take a look at. So feel free to to delve into that and to jump into that. (laughs) Um, Because I like to do that. I like to go back and reflect on things through the week that I've started and go, okay, what was my focus for the week? Now let me give you a little something to think about here before we go on break. And then we will be back looking at how to unleash our master manifester. Well, what was, when was the last time you enjoyed time with your inner manifester? Do you have conflicts with receiving and allowing bund- abundance to flow through you? And have you learned ways to get past the blocks, challenges, and being stuck when trying to create and receive in your life? There is no doubt in my mind that when we look at manifesting either needs or growing our resources, that many have been feeling defeated, exhausted, and frustrated in this area. Now, it is easy to automatically look at outside influences such as planetary alignments, numerological cycles, and influences and the 1% that wants us to believe that they have total control of our lives. However, are these not really just tools for us to grow and develop by? After all, they are not really there to defeat us, but to help us strengthen ourselves from the inside out and realize just how much power we have access to, how much influence we have over our own lives. So many times, We are full of manifestation energy. After all, we are formed in the likeness of our creator. Okay, that could be a big rabbit hole to go down right now. But most of us tend to keep this inner manifester on a really tight leash. And that is the leash of fear, karmic contracts, genetic coding, soul lessons. Now, while these are all actually more internal aspects, we tend to externalize them as excuses for not having what we would like in our lives. One misconception that I often see is that people expect to receive extreme abundance, wealth, money into their lives without doing anything for it. Now, granted, there could be a karmic agreement to that. However, it is important that many times effort is going to be needed to exert and bring forth the resources that we're seeking. And this is where I often see people so-called falling short. They simply don't put the necessary effort to make their accomplishments and even say that they are falling short of reaching their goals. Look at the term falling short for a minute. To start with, falling indicates a lowering of our vibration, being out of control in a chaotic and distorted way. Short indicates stopping before completion, not having enough, inadequate. Again, these are things that tend to lower our vibrational energy and place us on an energetic vibration of lack and distortions, which is then attempted to be balanced through greed, yet from a space of deprivation. And this is not a space that we can create from. The energy of wealth and abundance does not exist in this space and therefore can lead us into a downward spiral further and further away from our desired state. Many have also termed manifesting as evil. It is not. This distortion arises when we slip into the other energetic vibrations of hoarding, greeting, or greed, I should say, control, abuse, you know, those types of vibrations, after receiving what we have manifested. And manifesting is simply about creating resources that we can use and share, not own or possess, but use and share and exchange with others. Now, the twist or the paradox here is that, in a sense, we are always manifesting. 
However, oftentimes we are manifesting something that we do not desire or is not pleasurable instead of manifesting something that we truly enjoy and evolve this. As an integrated development specialist, I help people see the many aspects that create this experience, such as the above-mentioned things. And however, I also help them see that they are manifesting at all times. It is simply about shifting what they are manifesting. This is often a big aha for most people, and for they've been living under this belief that they're not manifesting when they really are. What are your experiences with manifesting? What have you used to move your manifestation energy out of distortions? And what is your relationship with abundance? This week, I'm focusing on a component of compassion that's related in the aspect of my books of give me, give me, give me. And this reminds us that it's important to know how to receive as much as to give. And through receiving, we can gain the resources needed to give more completely and in more ways. I'm going to take a short break, and when we return, I'm going to be taking a look at how to manifest things in your life, the different aspects that are involved in manifesting, and some of the ways that we block our ability to manifest. And the song I've got for you during our break is called Why's It So Hard? It's by Claire Hedin. And if you'd like to find out more about her work, you can certainly do so at her website, www.clairehedin.com. And that's C-L-A-R-E-H-E-D-I-N.com. And we'll be back in just a few minutes.
Welcome back. You are listening to Activating Compassion in the Midnight Hour, and my name is Jessie Ann Nichols-George. I'm your hostess this evening. You were just listening to a song by Claire Hadim, and it was called Why Is It So Hard? And you can check out more of Claire's work at www.clairehadim.com. That's C-L-A-R-E-H-E-D-I-N.com. And I just really appreciate Claire for allowing me to use her music during the show. It's so beautiful and so many things. And actually, I did do an interview with Claire a while back uh, at the end of 2012, and you can catch that in our archives if you'd like to listen more about some of the things that she does and, and what's behind her music. Now, oftentimes I do have guests on the show, but I had left tonight open a little bit because I had some shifts and changes happening in my life and And I also decided this was such a beautiful time for me to share some of my own work with you. And for those who aren't familiar with me, and I've had some people ask me recently, it's like, great, you're doing all these interviews of guests, and what about your work? (laughs) And what about your background and what you do? And so to give everybody a little bit of an idea Um, I am an integrated development specialist, and what I do is I'm actually blending over 50 different fields, practices, belief systems in my work. Uh, I have over 33 years' experience working with clients and customers and people in different areas of their life, and I do tend to to deal with all different types of areas of life for people um, that they're they're working with, whether that's relationships or financial things or um, family things or whatever the case may be, or just personal development and growth things. So it's a very open thing. I've created what's known as the Genesis Clearing Statement. I've authored four books. I um, have created the Compassion Tour, which is getting ready to start up again in about a month. So you can follow all of those things on my website, jessianenicholsgeorgethenumberone.com. And you'll also find a lot of great tips on there. I do videos every month. I just put out a brand new video uh, today, actually, on things. So that's worth checking out. And those videos are free as well as um, finding them on my YouTube channel. But what was so important about being on this topic tonight, unleashing your master manifester, And the thing is that so many people think that they don't have manifesting energy going on in them. And the reality of it is is we are manifesting all the time. Now, tonight is a very important thing because it is August 8th, 2014. And the important thing with this date is it's known as what's called the Lion's Gate. And the Lion's Gate energy, it falls in the middle of three, what we call three supermoons. And supermoons are where the moons are really big, really close to Earth, so they look bigger than normal um, a lot of times with it. And this happens to fall in a time of our harvest time, if we want to <laughs> call it that. It's, it's our harvest energy. Um, we've started the seasonal influence of the year, which is about reaping abundance. It's about receiving the different um, things that we have put into motion. Uh, we're starting to see uh, things produce in our life from seeds that we planted in our life last fall and also earlier this year in the spring. And with the Lionsgate energy, what it's doing is it's a peace portal that is opening up in our universe right now. So to fall in the middle of these three super moons and the Lion's Gate, part of that terminology comes because we are in the sign of Leo right now, the Lion energy. And the Lion's Gate Peace Portal, what it is doing is it comes to us from the energy of Lyra, which is the cat and the lion feline energy in the universe, which is a very healing, very abundant energy. It comes from the 11th dimension of the universe, which is a very high, elevated consciousness of energy in the universe. So when we talk about this, this is a big opening today. This is a big opportunity to really focus on our manifesting. It's the perfect time to do it. And we've just had 
Jupiter move into Leo, so it's blessing all of this incredible energy for us to start to turn things around. Um, We also, of course, have the sun in things. And we also have factors coming into play where a lot of what's happening for us in this realm of manifestation is related to karmic factors. So we're going to be touching on a lot of these things tonight and looking at these different pieces that play into why we are or aren't manifesting um, our desires and the lifestyle that we want to have or would like to have in our life. Um, And there's so many little subtleties there, and I could probably do a whole show on each one (laughs) of these pieces that I'm covering on this tonight. But I, I just figured this is the perfect time to do this show on manifesting for you. Um, we have, like I said, what's what's bringing in the karmic influences right now on this is that we have Saturn and Scorpio, and we have also Mars just entered Scorpio. So there's a lot of this deep, intense karmic energy that we're working through and working out. And for those that have really been working on clearing their karma, so to say, releasing things in their life, which is what really the whole first half of this year has been about letting go, um, you know, creating more freedom, more movement room, not being so tied into tight structures and things like that, and and opening these doors up right now. And now we're at a point that now that we've done the work and we've cleared the space and we've cleared the room, we have the room to embrace this receiving process within us. So in looking at this, one of the first and the most common factors that probably influence, I would say, our manifestation is going to be our thoughts, emotions, and feelings. And we hear that a lot, right? What you think you are, you know, what you feel you create, these sorts of things. And there is a lot of truth from this. What this is working with is this is working with what is known as like the law of resonance in the universe, it's one of the universal laws. And and it is true because every thought we have and every emotion we have has a vibrational energy to it when we get the feelings through. And so many times people are sitting there going, I would just love to have this in my life. I would just love to create this. I, I desire to do this. And yet... While they're they're saying that to themselves and they're thinking to themselves, wow, what a beautiful life this would be if I had this or if I had that, they're feeling fear. They're feeling fear. They're feeling panic. Um, And this happens oftentimes when we have excitement rolling through us and we're looking forward to maybe something happening in our life and we're thinking, okay, this change is going to to bring something to me, but at the same time, they're going into it with fear. And we can't manifest from fear. Well, I can't say we can't manifest from fear because we're always manifesting. But when we're going to manifest more fear is what's going to happen. So that law of resonance, what it's doing is the universe basically is going to match our energy. And this is why it's very important to shift our thoughts and our emotions and our feelings. And this can be very hard, especially if you're a person who listens to the news a lot during the day um, because there's a lot of negative programming that's coming in from that. Uh, We hear a lot of negative things and a lot of people we have coming to us saying, you know, oh, you can't do that or that won't work or things like that. And when we're taking that in, we're always absorbing these different things. And we need to shift that. And those are where we have to stop and look and say, okay, I don't have room for this anymore. (laughs) I'm going to house clear these negative pieces. And a lot of people wonder, how do I get out of these negative thought patterns? Because it's very easy to spiral. Once the fear comes up, once the worry, the anxiety comes up, it's very easy to go into this big, giant spiral of, oh my gosh, what if they're right? What if I can't do it? What if it doesn't happen? What if it doesn't come through? And then and then we're 
getting the universe what the universe goes is, well, let me show you what happens <laughs> if it doesn't come through, and that's what you end up receiving. So I have found for myself what I do is I will, for example, listen to my Genesis clearing statement, which is um, free to anybody who signs up for my mailing list. You can just go onto my homepage, and there's a video that it talks about it there. And um, uh, and for those that didn't catch what my webpage is or can't see it at the bottom of the show description, it's Jesse and. Nichols George, the number one dot com. So it's my full name, the number one dot com. And I will listen to that in the background. So it's constantly elevating my energy or uh, bringing up uh, my mind into a more positive space uh, that is in alignment with divine energy and divine will, which certainly is going to bring the best for me. Uh, other things I will do is turn on music that is uplifting or vibrationally healing. Stephen Halpern has some great music in this area. Snodham Kaur has some great music in this area. Peter Cater has some great music in this area. Um, Claire Hedin's music, she's got a lot of positive music. Uh, John Anderson has a lot of positive music in his work. And listening to music with positive or Uh, vibrational healing energies to them will elevate us out of those negative thoughts. A lot of times um, things like physical movement will help shift us away. If we set everything down for a minute and go for a five or ten minute walk or even just pause and go out and just stare at the sky. I do that a lot of times during the day, nighttime. I just take a little 10 minute, 20 minute break Whatever it is, if you have five minutes, five minutes is great too. And I'll just go out and stare at the sky and look at the clouds because it helps release my mind from the crazy thoughts um, out there. And it just reminds me when I look at the sky and I look at the trees around, it reminds me of the vastness and the bigger aspects of the universe. And the trees aren't worrying about it. You know, They're not sitting there going oh my gosh, I don't have enough money. And some people go, yeah, but they don't have bills to pay and things like that. But it reminds us that things do take care of themselves, but only if we're not stressing about them. And and it's so easy in these days and times to fall into those stress factors. And And there's a lot of easy ways to get out of those stress factors. And some of the other things I'm talking about tonight will help us move out of those stress factors as well. So uh, those are quick and easy ways, I find, to start to shift my energy from the spiraling negative manifestation to a more positive manifestation that's going on. And even something as simple as stopping and focusing on our breath. If you can just stop and focus on breathing, the deep breathing from your diaphragm area, and when we do that, that means sitting or standing without your legs crossed and your arms crossed. And sometimes what I will do is even just put my hands right over my solar plexus. And and that's where the diaphragm area is. And when we inhale, that part of our stomach is going to expand. And when we exhale, it's going to go back in again. And that deep breathing, what it does is it actually allows our physical body to relax when our physical body relaxes, our mental body cannot stay in the crazy spiraling thoughts. It automatically moves to a state of calmness. And when it moves to a state of calmness, our energy is automatically elevated up. So even something as deep breathing. Now by putting the hands over the solar plexus, one of the things about doing that is because oftentimes the stress and the tension is coming from external input into us. And when we do this, this actually creates a little bit of a sense of safety and security in our energy field, and it's kind of like saying, okay, I'm going to put a little pause on what I'm receiving (laughs) from the external world for a minute and just get centered in myself. So it's a great place to to 
automatically recenter ourselves simply by just breathing and focusing on that area. Now, another aspect that I see a lot with people is a lot of people will get into, I want this, I don't want that. And I have to be honest, this is one of the areas I'm still working on because it's so easy to slip into saying, I want this to happen in my life or I don't want that to happen in my life. And the want-don't-want aspect, what it is, is it's almost like a reverse uh, paradox in how it works. And so when we say, I want this to happen, what happens in our mind, what happens in our energy field, our thoughts and our emotions, is that it automatically puts us in a space of believing that we're in deprivation. (laughs) So it works by its opposite. So when we say, I want this to happen, we're we're actually not able to manifest that particular thing because we can't manifest something from a space of deprivation. So what we end up doing is we end up creating more lack in that situation or more a way of what we don't want. And when we say, I don't want this in my life, it's our brain automatically sees that as having an abundance of something. And so it's going to draw more in. (laughs) So we have to be very careful of using those terms, want and don't want. And matter of fact, if you're one of those people who really loves to work with paradoxes and you really love to work with polar opposites, you can have a whole lot of fun flipping everything around and saying, I don't want whatever you're actually desiring and saying, I want whatever you don't desire (laughs) in your life. So you can actually have a whole lot of fun with playing with the want and the don't want. And I've actually done that several times in in my life where I've sat there and I've said, I want to be afraid. I want to be challenged. I want <laughs> this. And it won't come to me because it's like getting right in its face and it and it just runs away like crazy from your life. And I've sat there and said, oh, I don't want love. I don't want a bunch of money rolling into my life. I don't want to, I don't really want to have all of these incredible things happening. And it just flows right in to me really easily. So if you're one of those people, you know, dyslexics might work <laughs> really well with that want, don't want aspect in there. And I see we have something coming into the chat room here um, from Doc. Uh, yes, the words want and need register energetically as belief um, that what we desire is outside of ourselves and our reach. Exactly. And changing want and need to require and desire shifts the frequencies exactly how it works, Doc. Um, And that's it. Because uh, the need, again, is a deprivation. When we say, I need this to happen, it's coming from fear and deprivation. And again, we're not going to create those loving, incredible aspects in our life from fear. Uh, Fear and love are basically polar opposites. And so, yes, when we can shift it to I require this or um, I desire this or I would like to experience this resource. Um, So that terminology can trip us up and it takes practice. I'll tell you because I'm not perfect at it by a long shot, but it takes practice to get out of that want, don't want habit um, of, of our terminology. So when we think of this and people say, well, they're just words. Well, on one hand, yes, they are just words, but the words carry a vibrational energy. They, they are energetically charged to different vibrations, and that's why words have the power that they have for us. That's why they have an influence in our life. So that's an area to really practice, and like I said, you can have fun, and I've done it. I've sat there cracking myself up days just going, I don't want to be rich. I don't want to have, (laughs) I don't want to have all kinds of people supporting me in my life. And the the universe just sees it as an abundance and wants to give it to you. So it's, it's a lot of fun to play with. Now, affirmations. A lot of people use affirmations and 
uh, and I admit I need to go in and probably make some updates and, and things in my books to correct some of that terminology. But with affirmations, there's a couple of things that we want to keep in mind. Again, a lot of people will say, I want an affirmation, so we want to stay, we want to be careful about using that terminology. Um, but one of the things that we want to do with affirmations is we really want to focus on the aspect of I am. Because we are a whole being, a whole soul, a whole aspect. The illusion that we are not is simply that. It's an illusion, it's a distortion that happens in our mind living through this earthly world where we believe we are not complete or not whole. I see this a lot in people with relationships where they're sitting there going, I'm not going to be complete if I don't have this person in my life or I'm not whole if I don't have a job earning a certain amount of money, things like that. They're, they externalize these things and we want to bring it back to that internal factor because everything is inside of us. We have it all. We have every resource there. And so when we're working with affirmations, we want to use the terms I am. And the reason that we want to use I am is because it keeps us in the present time frame, which is the only place that we're going to create from, is what our present mood, mind, space is. Okay, And it acknowledges the creator within us. Okay, we all are part of the creator. We all are part of that energy. We are that energy. And so to say I am this, it is actually acknowledging divine spirit, being active and present in your life. And even if you don't have something in your life, let's say you're trying to manifest a better job or you're trying to manifest more clients or you're trying to um, manifest a relationship, whatever it is, we have to acknowledge the side of ourselves that is already there, even if we don't see it in front of us. Just because we don't see it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And when we acknowledge its existence, that's when we're going to start to see it in the outer world. So if I acknowledge I am a powerful creative source that is going to change this universe and currently is changing this universe, again, keeping it present, that is changing this universe, then that is going to come out because then the universe, then the energy vibrations out there and the divine and our gods and our angels and whatever else you want to say is going to step in and go, yes, I'm so glad that you get that and I'm so glad that you're acknowledging that. Now I'm going to show it to you because you actually acknowledge that it's there. Okay? It's like with people. When we acknowledge, I see in you this amazing person. I see in you somebody who has this capability and who is this loving, caring person that person begins to be that way around you. So what we choose to see, what we choose to acknowledge as present in our life will manifest outside of ourselves. So that I am in affirmations is very, very important. And then another piece of this is also gratitude. And I'm getting confirmation from our chat room. <laughs> I love this. Thank you so much, Doc. Uh, you are one. You are on point 100% because Earth is an energy system for transmuting energy. It is not the school of life as so many teach. Um, everything is energy. It doesn't matter whether it's a human, a tree. Everything is energy in the universe. And while we may be learning lessons and becoming aware of different things like that. It's all about the energy vibrations that we choose to align with, and, we, and I'm going to get a little bit more into that a little bit later here, that the energy vibrations we choose to align with is what creates our experience. So, and, and that's part of what we're talking about here when we talk about thoughts, emotions, feelings, 
Um, and, and Doc goes on with, we are all cosmic beings here to remember self as part and parcel from cosmic intelligence. And that is it. it you know, part of this aspect of existence is to remember that we are that divine creator. And we come from that, and we are that. And we have to go back to choosing that. And when we choose that, then these doors open up. Our, our manifester gets off the leash. We set it free, and it can do amazing, amazing, incredible things in our life. So now another part of affirmations is gratitude. And when we're working with gratitude with affirmations, it's about being thankful for what we're receiving before we've received it. Okay? So that means that you have confidence that it's happening. You're trusting the divine to produce this for you. You're trusting your own inner creator, which is the divine, to produce for you, okay? So it's just like this gratitude ahead of time that's like, thank you for bringing this to me now. And that's going to be the next piece (laughs) that we need to put in. Most people, when they do affirmations, do not put a time on it, okay? So they'll say an affirmation of, I am changing the world, Thank you for letting me be a catalyst. Let's say they even get those two pieces in, but they forget to put the now in it. And if we don't put the now in it, guess what? It might not manifest till next lifetime. It might not manifest till you're 90 years old. Okay? We want to get now. Again, bringing it present. Because when we add that now in, it's saying, I'm going to make this happen now. I am creating this now. I am receiving this experience now. Okay? Um, Really, really a powerful thing there. And, And that's where a lot of people say, man, I have been saying these affirmations I don't know, for the the last 10 years, (laughs) and I must say them like 100 times a day, and I'm still not getting what I want. I would say 99% of the time they haven't put the time frame on it to have it happen now. So when we look at this, if we're going to put an affirmation on, um, I then will maybe say something, I'm getting ready to do this compassion tour. So I might create an affirmation that would say, I am successfully bringing my work into the world and people are filling up my events now. And... Yes, there can still be some time factors in there, but when I bring it all present like that, it's amazing how people start coming in, and not just people, but people who want to bring other people in for me. So these are important things. I am a highly desired job candidate with many job offers, and I am grateful that I have my choice of jobs to choose from. And all of this comes to me now. See, it's a very big difference from what we're used to, which is I want to bring love into my life. (laughs) You can just tell the difference in the energy vibration there. It's a big difference from saying, I want to have this person in my life. I want to have love in my life. I want to experience um, wealth in my life versus I am blessed to create this experience which makes my life rewarding and full and peaceful now. It's a very big difference in the energy there. So we want to keep that in mind when we're working with our affirmations. Now, when we're wanting to create things that are really pleasant, 
um, experiences in our life, and we are seeking to um, do things, as I mentioned, they're not going to come to us through fear. When we create from fear, we're going to create more circumstances that create fear. So what we want to do is to be at a vibration of love or above. And the reason for that, and and there's people out there that talk a whole lot about this, Christy Marie Sheldon is one of them, Um, but the love or above vibration, what it is is because when we reach love, that is the first level of our vibrational energy that operates without distortions. So if we're operating from that open heart space, from that loving energy space, tuning into how amazing the experience feels to be full and complete. And we can tune into this. Even if we don't have that experience yet, totally, we can always find areas to tap into and piece together of what that would feel like. What is the experience that we're seeking? And what would we feel like in that experience? Because we can't have an idea of of desiring to seek something unless we have an idea of what we're, unless we know what we want to feel. Okay, so for example, I couldn't have the desire of seeking the pleasure of having every workshop and every event I do fill unless I already know within me how I would fill if that's fulfilled. (laughs) So, here again, we already know how it feels, even without the, ex- the direct experience externally. The feeling is what's going to draw it in. So that loving energy is where we can really start to open the doors. And from there, we can create without distortions. And when I say creating without distortions, that means we can bring it in as a pure energy that supports us in our our evolution. It brings it in as an energy that is an enjoyable energy as opposed to full of challenges and blocks and obstacles. So, uh, for example, if I'm creating from fear, then I bring in things that tend to be not quite enough for what I need. Uh, For example, instead of creating a job that pays me $50,000 a year, I bring in a minimum wage job when I'm creating from fear. Okay, But if I'm sitting there and I'm creating from love and I say, oh my gosh, I've rescued this beautiful cat and I want to be able to provide for them or I really want to um, create a better lifestyle for for my children or whatever your situation is, Now you're shifting the energy from fear to a desire that comes from love. And it's not just about focusing externally, but it can also be a personal process of, I really want to create, or I shouldn't say want, (laughs) I really desire to create more resources in order to provide myself with an environment that allows me to keep my ener- my energy at a, a higher vibrating level so that I have more to offer people. So now I'm coming from a loving space. I'm coming from not greed. I'm coming from this aspect of opening my heart to an experience that expands me and tunes in more with my own divine self. In there. So coming from that loving energy becomes a very powerful, powerful space to to open up from. So we want to think about being on that love or above vibration. And when we talk about that, and this is why people who say have a lot of money already, they tend to keep drawing in more money because they're peaceful in their life a lot of times. They may not always have everything settled, but when it comes to finances, there's no worries there. There's a peacefulness for them. There's a joy. And when things are flowing into your life and you are creating these desired states that you're seeking, then 
again, you want to bring the gratitude in, the appreciation in. Thank you for receiving this. Get joyous about it, okay? Get joyous about that check. Even even if your mindset has been, this isn't enough, this isn't what I need, we want to offset that. And instead of doing that stop, pause, do your breath, and bring it back in and say, you know what? I really love that I've received this today. Now you change the whole energy vibration of how it's come to you, and what you're going to do is that energy vibration, that appreciation for receiving it, is going to make the universe say, let me give you more. Okay? It's the same thing. For example, if you gave somebody, I don't know, 50 bucks to help them out, and they said, oh, this just isn't enough. This just isn't going to cut it. Do you want to keep giving that person (laughs) more? Right? But if that person stops and goes, this is so helpful to me, and I really appreciate that you've done this to me and for me and that you're giving me what you can, you're going to want to do more. So we kind of have a similar relationship with the universe, with the divine creator. So we want to we want to stop and say thank you for this. Thank you for providing this for me. Okay, that gratitude goes a long way, and there's so much that we have to be grateful for. And I have to say, you know, in America, it's, it's very interesting because so many people say, "Oh my God, I'm going to lose my boat, or I'm going to lose this or that," and they're freaking out. And yet. You know, what we consider very harsh circumstances sometimes here in America is a thousand times better in living conditions than what many people are living in in other countries. And so there's a perspective there that, that no, we don't have to all drop into this, you know, really sparse lifestyle or things like that. Uh, just because there's other people out there that that are living in that lifestyle. However, the point is is that we always have things to be grateful for. And, yeah, there are times in our life that we have to stop and evaluate and put some priorities in, in order. That's just practical, logical aspects of life. However, on the other hand, again, coming from that that appreciation... And I so many times stopped and gone around and go, you know, I really appreciate this. I really appreciate that. And and when I focus on that, again, it's shifting my energy because when I step into appreciation of things, I automatically elevate my energy above love. And when I when I elevate above love, I automatically become magnetic. So that vibration of love is where we first become really, truly magnetic for positive forces. Okay, so moving on with all of this, um, one of the things I like to suggest to people is practice receiving because most people really forget to receive. They get so busy giving and yes, I talk a lot about my book, if you want to receive, you receive by giving. <laughs> and and that's in my Activating Compassion book. And, and there's a whole aspect in that, that as we give, we're going to automatically be able to receive. But there's a lot of people who give, and they give and they give and they give and they give, but they don't allow other people to give to them. And my question always comes back to them, why would you deprive somebody of one of the greatest experiences on the face of this earth, which is to give. You know how good it feels. Why would you deprive somebody else of that? And there's so many people that are sitting there in these struggling situations and they're not letting anybody give to them. There's actually people that will want to give to them, but they're not letting them give to them. So this is an important thing. We want to practice receiving from others. And it can be the smallest things. It can be um, them you know, receiving their attention. It can be receiving money in some situations. It can be receiving their time. But getting used to receiving. 
And there's so many people, they get busy and they start talking in conversations and they're never listening. So listening, for example, is a form of receiving. When we sit down and really listen, I don't mean just hear somebody. I mean actually listen. That's a form of receiving. When we stop and we pause and we look around us and we look at the trees and we look at the skies and we look at the stars, we're allowing ourselves to receive the universe. And, and we need to be able to receive if we're going to get to some of those desired states that we seek. So that's, a, that's an important thing. And it's important to allow others, again, that gift of, of letting them share with you. And the share in this exchange, and so many people feel like, I, I feel bad if I take from people. Like they, they feel like they're just taking as opposed to receiving. So I want you to shift that program. You're not taking, you're receiving. Okay? And it's very easy for light workers and star seeds and all these spiritual people out there. It's very easy for them to get in this giving, 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 giving mode and to not receive. I see this issue most often in healers and spiritual workers. They don't know how to receive. So take it with small steps. Again, it could be the smallest thing. It could be letting somebody cook you dinner. It could be the smallest of things. And sometimes people feel like, but I want to give something back. I want to exchange something. Okay, there's a ton of different ways you can exchange things, and it doesn't have to be through money necessarily. You know, you can exchange an hour of your time for an hour of their time. There's, there's tons of things, but it's that balance of giving and receiving. And so I highly suggest um, to people to practice that aspect in there. Now, moving on, we have another piece here which plays in that is a little bit more external to us, and that is the aspect of moon cycles, okay? There are definitely certain times when we're going to sit down and we're going to work with these different pieces like affirmations and things like that. Our moon cycles actually have different energy currents to them. So when our moon, for example, is waxing as it is right now, which means we go from the new moon to the full moon. So the moon is growing in its size the way we see it from Earth, anyways. It's gaining more light, okay? And we actually have the full moon coming up in two days on the 10th. And, again, that's the second super moon of a series of three super moons. And with this impact of the moon cycles, we have a receiving aspect, which is what we're in right now when the moon is waxing, And we have a giving or releasing aspect, which is when the moon is going from full moon down to the new moon, okay? And we can create and we can manifest under both cycles. However, we do it differently, okay? So when we are manifesting with the waxing moon going from new to full moon, what we're doing is that's the time to really put our energy out. That's the time to be active, and it's the time to allow, um, you know, you can also do receiving. You can do receiving in both cycles, but it's the time to really get proactive in things. It's the time to really put a lot of energy into what you want to grow and develop. And there are some other little subtleties with the moon cycles, like void, of course, cycles and things like that. But, again, that could be a whole (laughs) other. arena and course uh, just in and of itself. Um, And then in the waning moon cycles, when we're trying to manifest when the moon is going from full to new, the way that we manifest is by getting rid of the things that don't serve us. It's about getting rid of the negative thought patterns. It's about um, letting go of those people and situations in our life that are 
weighing our energy down. They're keeping us in the lower vibrations. Um, they're inhibiting our growth. Okay, so that's kind of the emptying out, and that's the time where we're doing some house cleaning and making room for the other things to come in. Okay, so the more we release what doesn't serve us, the more room we have for what will serve us in things. So that's a that's a big piece right there, is is with the moon cycles. So know what moon cycle you're on. There's tons of places you can find the moon cycles. Um, findyourfate.com is is one of those sites that you could go and find the moon cycles. But they're they're out there all over the place. So knowing what that is also helps you know how to structure things like your affirmations because uh, you then are going to go, uh, for example, on a waxing moon, I am uh, receiving and creating such and such an aspect in my life now. Whereas on the waning moon, you're going to shift it and say, I am releasing everything that is standing in my way now. Okay, so know those cycles. Now, we also have things in there like planetary alignments, numerology. Um, This deals with time and synchronicity for us. So when we look at the astrology and the numerology, this gets into things like our personal cycles, and and, uh, that taps into numerology. For example, we each have what's known as a personal cycle, just as a quick overview here. And the personal cycles, what they do is they're aligned to a number one through nine. And we go, we all go through these cycles. And depending on where we are in that also can influence, um, for example, whether we put more of a focus on building relationships with people and building partnerships or whether we focus more on changes or whether we focus more on spiritual processes or all of these different pieces. So knowing our personal uh, numerological year is going to be valuable as well. So, uh, for example, you know, if all the energy is about completing things, it's not necessarily the time to start your new projects, okay? Uh, If your energy and your personal cycle is all about building relationships and partnerships, you don't want to be isolating yourself off, okay? So these are little pieces that help us out. Astrology, our planetary alignments. Uh, I mentioned this at the beginning of the show when I talked about the today being the Lion's Gate energy and that opening of that portal. And if anybody has missed part of this show, feel free to go back and listen to it in the archives because there's a lot of information that I've um, been covering here. But, uh, for example, uh, a lot of people praised Jupiter being in cancer. Well, there's all kinds of factors like that. They say, oh, that's such a you know, wonderful place, and I was one of the only ones out there going, yeah, no, not really, <laughs> because... When I look at how Jupiter interplays with cancer, it can actually be very cheap and it can actually be a very deprivation energy when it interacts with cancer. However, it could favor things, for example, in the home environment or or giving birth or things like that. Um, But when we look at Leo, what we're going to see now with Jupiter and Leo at this point, for example, we're going to see certain industries Boom, we're going to see things that deal with um, health and fitness to a certain extent. We're going to see industries boom that are related to fun and entertainment. Industries are going to boom. Things that are products about staying youthful and keeping looks are going to boom uh, during this next year in there. Um, relationships, Jupiter, it's going to expand relationships and the heart energy because Leo has a lot of heart energy. We talk about the Lion's Gate, the planet Lyra, that 11th dimension. It's a very heart-centered energy. It's a bridging between the upper spiritual realms and the earthly realms. And so it's going to be a very expansive um, energy in that way. People who utilize 
this from an ego space, a very egotistical space um, and a greed space, are going to have trouble. They actually will see a depletion in their energy because they'll be operating from the distortions. People that operate from the very compassionate space as things grow and develop from them. And Leo is just so abundant and so expansive in, in its energy. It's a natural harvest receiving energy. Um, are going to actually thrive quite well in this. So I have to say I'm greatly looking forward, being that my work <laughs> is in compassion, I'm looking forward to this expansion and this development that is happening. So, you know, when we look at these things, some people wonder, why is this not happening for me? Why isn't it working out? Well, there could actually be a timing factor happening. We look at things, for example, when Saturn moves through our charts and we get our Saturn returns, things like that happening. And those can create challenges where it makes it very difficult for for us to expand. So knowing some of those aspects and how they're hitting us personally, it may let us know that, hey, we need to kind of step back and restructure or we need to focus on the more practical things in our life as opposed to some of the other fun things in our life. And as we do this, then we open the door for the fun things. So that timing and that synchronicity can really be a huge piece for us in there. And it's kind of like knowing that you can't force your way, like you can't force somebody to like you. Uh, You can certainly keep working on yourself and making yourself a person who becomes more desirable, but you can't force people to like you. So it's the same thing. When we know what these influences are doing, we actually can get in the flow and and tap in stronger to that creative energy um, versus working against it. It's like the difference of flowing with the river and having a great rafting experience versus trying to swim upstream in high rapids. And that's that's what the astrology and the numerology piece does for us. It's a timing piece uh, in there. Um, you know, I used to do some canyoneering every now and then or uh, go out into the Narrows and in Zion National Park. And and there's certain times a year that you just don't want to be in the river <laughs> or in a canyon. You don't want to go into a canyon when you see the monsoon clouds coming through, okay, because you know that's going to be a highly dangerous situation where you could lose your life. Um, but when you've got that nice, bright, sunny day and you go out earlier in the day and you get through and it's a safe way to go and you can have a great, enjoyable experience. So knowing those pieces can help us out as well. Now, moving, moving on here, we have our chakras or the energy centers within our body. And we have one center in particular that is related to our money, and that is the root chakra. It's located right at the base of our spine, okay? And this is also the same chakra that is related to passions and desires and sexuality. And so it's amazing how many people, if they're having sexual issues (laughs) in their life, and I don't want to go too in-depth or too uh, out there for people, but if they're having issues in that life, they oftentimes will also have financial issues going on. It's a very interesting piece that comes together. Now, the the root chakra will also work with other chakras um, in there as well, and we look at the, the upper two chakras above it, and we get into the solar plexus chakra, or the sacral chakra, for example. And when we're looking at those two areas, those deal a lot with what we're receiving in. It deals, uh, the the sacral chakra, for example, deals with our processing. So we might be taking something in and not processing it, and that creates a block for us. But the root chakras are our clear money chakra. And if this gets blocked up, and and that energy center is not flowing, we will see some difficulties. So there's actually a very uh, kind of quick little um, thing that we can do with this. And 
Um, what I like to do is, is to help with the root chakra. Is You can always use crystals and gemstones uh, with it when we're looking at the root chakra. We, we want to look at things like um, your deep red stones, your, your rubies, your garnets, your um, obsidian, things like that uh, in it. And you'll want to look at that. And you can actually just place it right on the tailbone there uh, area. You can also use essential oils when you're working with chakras. So when we're looking at the root chakras, we want to think the deep, earthy scents, or, uh, the musk, the sandalwood, things like that, that are deeper, earthier scents to them. Cinnamon is a, actually a really good one. Cinnamon and nutmeg work really great with uh, money things. They're, they're great prosperity herbs. Uh, to work with, and you can always dab a little bit of those oils. Make sure that it's not just completely straight. You usually want to have a carrier oil for it or something like that, and there's a lot of people that uh, do some very high-quality oils out there. Wendy Gormley, Gormley Kester, I've had her on the show before, very knowledgeable about that uh, aspect in there. But even a quick, easy way is to place your left hand over your heart chakra area, so right around your chest area, and your right hand down there around the root chakra. And if you're not comfortable actually touching that area on yourself, you can actually just even hold it a little ways away, um, and it will work as well. And what you're doing is you're drawing on the heart chakra. So your, your left side is your receiving side, and you're going to draw on the loving heart energy of your heart chakra and let it roll all the way through that left arm around and down through your right arm and hand and let that flow right out into your root chakra. So even just taking a couple of deep breaths, and you might want to do that even just right now, go ahead and put your hand on your, your left hand over your heart chakra and your right hand right over that root chakra. And just focus on that loving heart energy as you breathe. Go ahead. You want to breathe from the diaphragm. And just focus that pouring right in. And what that's going to do is when we draw on that heart energy, it's going to open up any of the blockages that are in our root chakra. And this is actually something that I can work with with people live when I'm doing healing work. And when I'm on the road, I will be taking live sessions for things like this, where I can work with the chakras, the energy centers, the angels, the guides, things like that. And, and angels are a whole other <laughs> area altogether. But even just take a couple of deep breaths. And it's really a quick, easy way to... Again, keep the root chakra open, elevated, and in its pure truth, which is to manifest, which is to bring in resources for us. And you should feel as you breathe into that you might even feel a little tingling going on. You might feel um, a little relaxation going on. People get different sensations. And some people might even experience a little bit of uh, awakening of the kundalini energy. And the kundalini is an energy that originates from the root chakra. Um, it's oftentimes people that are working with that will draw it up through the spine uh, area and out through the, the crown chakra. Uh, there's a variety of different ways of working with the kundalini, and the kundalini is helping to move that root chakra energy is what it does. Uh, the thing that people can struggle with a little bit with it is it can also raise the sexual energy <laughs> at the same time. So um, that is that is very natural of we're doing root chakra energy, which at this point in time, given the influences we have with Scorpio as well as the Leo energy that we have going on and, then, and all of that, 
um, the root chakra is aligned with Scorpio. And with Mars and Scorpio right now, the root chakra is a great area to tap into because Mars is a very rapid, quick happening energy and Scorpio being aligned to the root chakra, the depths of it. So we really have some powerful influences that we can work with and activate um, right now with everything, um, with it. Now, another aspect that we have that goes on when we look at money factors, oh, and this could get, like I said, I could do a whole show on each of these individual (laughs) components, but I'm giving you some different little overviews here tonight. And it kind of, again, it gives you a chance to be exposed to some of my breadth of knowledge. And this is what I part of why I call my work integrated development because I do deal in this vast amount of areas um, of understanding of of what interplays in anything that's happening in our life. Uh, But the next thing would be soul lessons and karma. And this is, our soul lessons are connected with karma. And a lot of people, karma gets this bad rap, right? So many people are like, oh, that's karma, you know, and that's your karma for this. And And karma is really basically a reflection. It's a resonance. And it's a cause and effect sort of aspect in our life. So when we do something, it's going to create an effect. Okay? It's going to have an effect. And that's going to create another effect and so on. So every decision we're making, every choice we're making, every time we're going through these different emotional swings, we're creating different results coming out. Now, the really cool thing is we can change this at any point. We can change what we're resonating at. But soul lessons are a big thing because what happens is we've come in to get certain experiences. And this can be a really challenging piece because when we get into soul lessons, one of the big things we're getting into is acceptance. Now, we look at people sometimes and we think, that person is like the nicest person. I can't believe that they're having difficulties and challenges. And they keep giving, even though they're having all these challenging circumstances. What we don't realize when we start looking at this piece is that In a previous life, that person may not have been the nice person. That person might have been greedy. They might have been a tyrant. They might have been extraordinarily jealous. They might have been dealing with all kinds of things that were not nice. And now they're getting that experience of being on the other end of it. And their soul made this situation come up so that they could get this lesson and this understanding of what they put other people through. And this can be a really, really big challenging piece for people because what it means is it means that we have to accept that at some point our soul made a choice to be different than what we are now. It made that choice to be that tyrant. And now we're having to balance that out. Now we're having to get the other aspect. And why do we get that other aspect? So that we learn and we understand the actual impact of our choices. And that's not an easy thing to get through. It's hard to accept that we might have treated somebody poorly. It's hard to accept that we might have been that tyrant. It's hard to accept these things. But When we get to acceptance and we say, you know what, and and I look at this sometimes with relationships with myself, (laughs) and I say, man, I must have been a heartbreaker somewhere. (laughs) You know, I must have really, I must have really put some people through there. And and the trick with this is that we don't want to get wrapped up in, oh my gosh, I was this horrible, bad person, and I did all these mean, awful things to people. What we want to do is we want to refocus it and say, okay, well, obviously I made a choice somewhere that created this situation. Somewhere my soul said it needed this lesson. So if I can accept the fact that I might not have been the best person in a previous life 
or that my soul gave me this to learn by. Now I turn it around because now I'm no longer a victim. And, and if we choose to remain in the victim space, we're not going to get those aspects that we're seeking and desiring. Okay, It's going to block and inhibit and leash up our manifester. But when we come into acceptance and we say, you know what, I, I accept it, I, whatever it is, and now instead of playing the victim, I'm going to come at people with a very loving, open heart, and I'm going to be willing to work with whatever the parameters my, cho- my soul chose. Because as I come to acceptance, that doesn't mean that I'm accepting to live in this whole huge of poverty. It just means that I accepted that I brought myself into this to get a lesson. So what's my lesson? And, and how can I come through this in a loving way? And as I do that, I'm going to unleash that manifester and it's going to start creating a life that I desire more. It's going to start making the shift that's going to change what's manifesting for me. And so I'm actually taking this approach with more and more people in my life where I'm now looking at it saying, okay, I accept I might have been that heartbreaker in another life. I accept that I might have caused some pain with people in my life, and now... I'm going to love them unconditionally if they're in my life. So it's a whole different way of working. And when we get to that point, it's amazing. The doors just open up and we place ourselves in the receiver position and it allows us to really start to let that manifester go to work for us. It's a very, very powerful space to be in. Now, this aspect of our soul lessons also is going to go hand-in-hand hand with karmic agreements. And this, this is a really big thing. And this is where we start getting into some of those DNA programming. This is where we get into soul coding, things like that, which we hear a lot of, and we hear a lot of talk these days about decoding got to decode what's in there because we've got this code towards this action or that experience. And if we decode it, then we can change that experience. And, and yes, there's a lot of truth to decoding. And I'm very, I, I work actually part of the work I do is working with the angels and helping people decode their programs and opening those up and, and working past them. So one of the pieces when we look at karmic agreements, what they are is they are contracts that our soul put into place based on things that we needed at different points of existence. So, and and that's kind of, a, I guess, a simplified term if you want to say it, but basically it's, it's kind of like if you are a child, you might put an agreement in place um, to have parents that will will support you in your growth. Um, but when you become an adult, you don't necessarily need that highly mothering, smothering energy. You need some freedom to it. So that agreement would no longer be valid for you. But if it keeps carrying over, you end up not becoming your own person because you have too much of that smothering energy going on. So karmic agreements are like this, and they can carry over lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. So, for example, what will happen is there's a lot of people at some point in their process, they might, for example, have um, lived a life that was, for example, a monk. They might have lived in a monastery, and they took a vow of poverty with that lifetime, and money was not needed for them. And they didn't complete that contract. They didn't say, okay, I'm ending this contract. And now they bring it into this lifetime and they can't make money to save their life because that karmic agreement is still in place. And how do we know these karmic agreements are there? How do we know what they are? It's it's a little process of delving in deeper (laughs) into ourselves and looking at the nature of what's happening in our life. If we just look at the nature of our life, 
we'll start to understand some of the karmic agreements we have. So if we are putting in a lot of effort and not receiving uh, what we need for that, if we're not receiving enough money, somewhere there's a karmic agreement that said, you said to yourself, you didn't want a lot of money. Uh, Whether that was because you were a monk, whether that was because you lived in a situation where if you did have money, people were constantly beating you up or uh, being abusive or different things like that, or uh, you didn't want to be associated with people with a lot of money, um, and and that happens a lot when we talk about past life things. You might have had a negative experience with having money in a past life, uh, so you agree not to have money. Uh, so we can look at those different pieces and look at the nature of what's happening in our life, and sometimes these contracts will kick in at a certain age in life or a certain point in life, and what we want to do is go through and and this creates a conflict with our soul for receiving because this lifetime we're going well I need money I need money to pay my bills and last time lifetime it was like well I don't want any money I don't need any money can't have money in my situation so your soul is conflicted do I give him money do I not give him money what do I do here okay so when we look at that we say Now we want to go in and say, okay, I understand that I had an agreement to not receive money in in a previous life. And sometimes that will come to us in dreams or visions or other signs um, to understand exactly what that lifetime is, and it's best when we really can probe into where that agreement came from. But we say, I now choose to break my agreement for poverty, and I'm rewriting a new agreement for abundance. I'm rewriting a new agreement that provides me a great amount of peace and joy in my life. So it's actually about rewriting those agreements. And effective now, I terminate the old agreement and I start the new agreement. And there's Uh, this is something you can actually even coordinate with the moon cycle so that you terminate the old agreement uh, within a day or two prior to the new moon or right at the new moon, and you start the new agreement with the new moon energy. And that can be a, a powerful shift because then you are growing that new agreement. And you can keep, you know, redoing that every new moon if you want to create a little cycle of working with that or or periodically whenever you become aware of something. Um, I like to do these different things. So the karmic agreements can be really, really important because that's one of the things that oftentimes can be very overlooked. So let's just take a minute, and I want you to take a minute and just kind of reflect on your life and say, you know, okay, What are the things that I feel maybe aren't working the way I would like them to in my life right now? And just take a moment to kind of bring those thoughts into your head, what those things are. It could be anything. It could be relationships. It could be work. It could be friendships. It could be family. It could be all kinds of things. It could be money things. And what I like to do when I'm breaking agreements is I like to give them a blessing and an appreciation. And so as I draw these things in, I like to stop and say, you know, I really appreciate that you served me so well when I needed you there. I don't view you as bad. I don't view you as evil. You served me very well when I needed you you as an agreement. However, I need to bring a termination to this agreement now. And I am bringing a termination to this agreement now because this no longer is serving me in this lifetime and I do not need this in this lifetime. 
And because we've emptied that out, we now want to create our new agreement. So I want you to think about what it is that you're really desiring to manifest. What is it that you really want to open up right now in your life? And just take a moment to focus on that and to bring that in. And to tune in with that. And you can say, I'm now creating, or I now create a new agreement to serve my needs in this lifetime. And that agreement is to have the experience of, and fill in whatever it is for you, And feel the joy of receiving that to you. Be joyous about getting it. And, and, and say, I am so grateful that this enters my life now, that it becomes active and visible in my life. I know it's always been there, but I really appreciate that it's it's active in my life now. So that brings in our gratitude, that brings in the acknowledgement that it's there. And I appreciate that this agreement will serve me well in divine truth. And I like to do that so that it it keeps it in a pure state as opposed to a state of distortion that are happening. So we just let go of the old agreement that's not serving us, brought in the new agreement that does serve us in this. And again, you can change these agreements because sometimes we become aware of different things at different points. And you can change these agreements at any time to serve what your needs are and what your requirements are at that point in your life. You know, we have different things at different points in our life that are are valuable to us. And what happens is now this starts to unfold for us and it starts to open the doors for us. And it helps us shift our energy so that we're operating in greater and greater and greater consciousness. Um, Very powerful things here, and and I know I've just kind of touched, (laughs) I've just kind of cracked the door open on all of these different pieces, but it just goes to show how many different things can be interplaying in our ability to manifest in our life. And, And again, I think the point is that we are always manifesting It's just a matter of practicing to be more and more conscious about what we're manifesting and to be aware that it's okay to shift what you're manifesting. You have the manifestor power. It is turned on 100% of the time. It's up to you where you're going to put that energy and what you're going to manifest. And you are not powerless as a lot of society and things lead you to believe. And does it take practice sometimes? Absolutely, it can take practice. Even after all my years and all my history and all my family heritage, I still have to practice on these things. I'm not perfect at it. But the more I do practice it, the better I get at it. So hopefully you've enjoyed the show and and it's just been perfect to bring this again to you on this day, August 8th, 2014, at the Lionsgate Energy. And certainly I hope you'll utilize that. Feel free to, if you've missed any part of the show, to come back and get it. Share it with others because we've covered a couple of really amazing techniques 
in here and a lot of really great thoughts. And again, if you want to go in more in-depth work with me, um, this is something you can certainly do. I'm available for private appointments. You can check things out on my website, jessianenicholsgeorge, the number one dot com, or email me. My email is jesse at jessianenicholsgeorge, the number one dot com. And again, I am getting ready to go out and tour starting in about a month. I'm going to be all around the U.S. I can do live appointments while on tour, as well as taking appointments online through uh, either Skype or by phone, things like that, to work with people um, if you're unable to connect with me. The events that I have going on are highly transformative. I mean, if you want a big pack of punch to to do some major work in your life, uh, the full day events or the full weekend events are definitely going to be for you. If you even want uh, even the shorter evening events that I'm going to be doing that are about two hours long, and I'll be doing some song style events, which is a kind of discussion, awareness building um, uh, sort of, of event. And also I will be doing healing events where we will be focusing uh, on healing these different patterns in our life and uh And even those two-hour events can have a tremendous amount of impact in people's lives. I've seen people attend them and their whole life has basically changed because of one little technique we worked with in in one of those two-hour sessions. So um, do catch up with me. Watch. I will, like I said, over the next couple of weeks, start getting all the dates up of where I'm going to be. I definitely know at the autumn equinox I'm going to be in Seattle area. Um, So if you're out in that area, we're going to be doing a full two-day weekend event. There are some one-day options with that event available. Um, I know that I'm going to be heading to the East Coast and be around the New Jersey area around Halloween, and I will probably be up near, uh, I'll be in Pennsylvania late October, um, probably up around the New York area earlier in October. Um, So Lots and lots of events, and then I'll be heading probably down to the southern part of the states as I move more into November, and uh, and I'll probably be swinging around into areas like Texas and Arizona and some of the other states. So I'm literally going to be all over, and even if I don't have a specific location where you are, I might be passing through that area, and I would be happy to schedule an appointment with you as well. So that's just something to keep in mind, and um, and there's different options for that. And, and again, just contact me um, if you're interested in, in getting a live appointment while I'm on the road. Um, next week, I'm going to have Janielle Huff, who will be talking about the chakras and how to use your senses to know your chakras. Um, we talked about my books that are being out and released and uh, the events that I have going on uh, for the rest of the year. You can also catch up with the video tips. Like I said, I just put out a brand new video today. Um, you can listen to the archive shows. You can look at the blog posts that I've put out, uh, find different ways to connect with me, purchase products. The whole works is on my website. Again, jessianenicholsgeorge, the number one dot com. And there's, a, there's also pages on all the Main Street Universe hosts uh, that we have here in the network here. Um, August special deal, by the way, I'm doing dream and symbols interpretations now. It's uh, something I've worked on for many, many years, but it's something I'm now offering as a service, and I'm offering that at 25% off. It's a great way to get insights